Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we've got the maiden flight of the Extreme Flight Slick V2. If you checked out the first look on this plane, you know I have this one set up to run on a single six cell battery. So this is an experimental flight. I don't know what's gonna happen. I wanna show you real quick the battery setup up front. I've got a six cell 5000, that's a Liperior 75C. Yes, I intended to go lighter than that initially, but I couldn't get it to balance. So I put a heavier battery in and I also wound up putting about two and a half ounces on the nose, which I'm not real happy about, but I wanna fly it and see what I think of it before I invest any effort in making those changes permanent. And then regarding the battery, I just wanted to show you guys because it's gonna be really important and I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up or not, but I am at 4.19 volts per cell on the six cell. And then I also have a 2200 LiPo connected to my power distribution board. So I'm powering the servos from a standalone battery. In terms of the build recap, it's extreme flight. I don't know what to tell you. It's, I'm, I'm kind of giving up on trying to give you critiques of extreme flight planes because there's just nothing to say. The plane fit together perfectly. All the control surfaces were hinged and taped for me to begin with. I didn't have any fitment issues on the plane. The wings fit very tight to the fuselage, as you can see, no air gaps there. Uh, the, the quick release mechanisms on the wing are perfect. Just no problems at all. The cowl uh, fit obviously flush, the graphics line up correctly. And I was able to get a really nice gap between the Extreme Flight spinner and the cowl using the AM670 motor, so no issues there. And of course, I'm sticking with the carbon fiber 18 by eight prop that I also got from Extreme Flight. And that's about it. The radio system is Express LRS, a Radio Master ER6, and that's an Express LRS receiver. And I'll be running the Radio Master transmitter. Any questions, Dave? No, let's fly. Let's fly. Yeah. All right, here we go, guys. Maiden flight of the Extreme Flight 70 inch Slick V2. No stabilizer in this plane, just the receiver. The wind is coming from my left, so I'm gonna take off left to right. The rates are mostly set up per book. The high rates are definitely per book for the 3D mode. The uh, low rates, I gave myself a little more elevator than what the book called for. I didn't like the, uh, the amount they had, so I gave myself a little bit more elevator. And like I said, this is an experiment. I have no idea what's gonna happen here. I've got it balanced very close to the spar tube, so I think it'll fly. But again, we're running a lighter power setup. And because of that, I had to put some weight in the nose. So we'll see what happens. Here we go. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. I got to trim it a little bit. I definitely feel a need for some trim. Not bad though, just a couple clicks. So let me just get it up high and trim it out real quick. Need a couple clicks of left and maybe a couple clicks of down. So that's tail heavy, right? Down elevator, if you yep. start out neutral and you have to put down elevator, that's tail heavy. So that's what we're seeing. Kind of knew that a little bit. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we kind of expected, yeah. but it's not dramatic. And I don't see the tail, I don't see the tail dragging in the sky, which is another indicator. You don't want to see that. Are you at about half throttle there? Yep, about half throttle right there. there. Oh, beautiful. Yep. Very close to half throttle, actually. Beautiful. Okay, I feel like that feels pretty good in terms of trim. I'm gonna gain a little bit of altitude and go into high rates. Cause I wanna see, you know, how it performs in high rates and make sure my expo makes me happy. There we go, very nice. Okay, that feels good to me. All right, let's start doing the stuff. I think everything feels pretty good so far. I, I'm not, I don't have any flight characteristic concerns. That was my big thing, it was the weight. I, wanted, I, I was very concerned about being too tail heavy or had, adding so much weight that the plane didn't feel good in terms of power, but we'll do the uh, inverted test first. So 45 degrees, go inverted and absolutely a perfectly straight line. <laughs> so I'm content with the way it feels in terms of CG, at least to start. I do find myself tuning these things over time, but at least to start, I think we're in a good place. So there's that. I wanna do a loop, and on the loop, what we're checking for 
is a straight tail. So I just want to track through the loop and see how we do. So just straight up, plenty of power through the loop and back down. Yeah, perfectly straight. Very nice. All right, we're going to do the yaw test now. And what I do on the yaw test, I do need to bring it into the wind and I'm going to climb straight up reduce the power to zero and look at which way the nose drops. And we do that just to see if we need to make any adjustments to the rudder. So here comes the yaw test. We are into the wind and straight up we go. Kill the power and which way does she drop? She drops straight down, which is what you wanna see. Again, I'm, I'm not surprised at all this is extreme flight, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised. They make straight, straight airplanes. I'm gonna check my voltage. 8.2 volts. It says 8.2 volts, which is obviously wrong. So I'm gonna land and hook myself up to the battery because we need to be paying attention to the voltage on this plane. <laughs> so I'm gonna set it down and connect the battery and then we'll go back up and finish the pack. Not bad, not bad. All right, let me bring it around and get my battery connected so we can see what my pack voltage is for the mains, the main flight voltage. I just want, since I'm on the ground and I had to connect my mains voltage, I wanted to show you where we are. We're at 23.4 volts, which means I still got plenty to go and we're at five minutes. Now, granted, that's very modest flying, right? Nothing dramatic there, we're not, we're not hitting it. But so far, five minutes. Okay, here we go with the second takeoff of the slick. Actually, the ailerons are fine on low rates, although I personally, I want more. I want a little more than that. They're just a little soft for me, but not by much. Okay. So very, very subtle. Okay, back into high rates we go, and I want to finish our maiden checks. So Dave, I'm going to do a stall. We'll okay. come around from the right, and we're going to do a stall. And uh, I'm not sure, Dave has a hard time seeing it because he's behind the camera, but I can tell you from a color perspective, I love it. I love the white and orange, man. It is just so hard to beat that because you get these insanely bright pops of color. Okay, here comes the stall about 30, 40 degrees up, power's off, and there's the stall and easy recovery, perfect. All right, loving it. All right, I'm gonna do a knife edge this time, run it by, we'll do a knife edge run just to see if we have any coupling issues that I don't care for. And yes, I am pulling toward the gear a little bit, which actually checks out because that's weight. That's weight related to the balance. So I'm pulling to the gear. That means I've got down elevator to accommodate the balance situation. So I think it probably maybe needs just a little bit more weight, but yeah, I'm feeling a little coupling there. But overall, I'd say that's not bad considering what I've accomplished here by running this plane, and you can fly it. As you can see, I'm flying that. That's not too bad. It does pull a little toward the gear though. So that's not bad considering what we accomplished by putting a 6S power plant in a 12S plane. Yeah, it's, it's very manageable. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna do a flat spin. So Dave, we'll go up, we're gonna climb up high. Yeah, there you go, do a vertical to see how it climbs. Yeah, here we go with the straight up climb. Um, yeah, that's not a problem. No, no, that's not a problem. Okay, here we go with the flat spin. Oh, nice. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. All right, I wanna try my pop top with this because I've been working on the pop tops. I'm gonna add that to my repertoire. It's not really necessarily a test of anything other than how the plane does in certain maneuvers. So I kinda of wanna see how it does in a pop top. So we're gonna do that now. We'll come around, and this will be the last maneuver. Gotta stop messing around. So we're gonna come around, go inverted, hit the gas, straight up. And I didn't do that right, so I'm gonna try it again. Hey, when you try that again, can I request something? Go out farther? No, uh, can you go vertical and, and way up high, 
just hover it for a second and pull out of the hover just to see the power, but high. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, we can try that. If you want to, if you feel like doing that. Uh, just to test the power of it, to check the power, how it pulls right, hold out on, of the hold hover. On. We're 22.2 .2 volts, so this is it. Okay. We're, that'll have to wait for the next flight. 22.2, right. I don't want to mess around much past this. But Absolutely. I do want to try that pop top real quick. So I'm going to try it. it one more time. So there's the inverted power. And not bad, not bad. I think I can make it better, but you know, that's just practice with the airframe. But yeah, it's overall, it's pretty good. All right, that's it for the Maiden. 22.2 .2 volts. I know I can go lower, but I don't like to mess around on Maidens. I got to get it down and check things out. Gonna go back into low rates and get it on the ground and do the post-flight inspection. Okay. I feel pretty good about it. I mean, the only, the only downside that I detected so far was that pulling toward the wheels on the knife edge, but that's it. All the other flight characteristics were fine, and I can probably cure that with uh, another adjustment in weight. All right, we're gonna put this on the table and wrap this video up. You know, the obvious answer when it comes to weight, the correct thing to do is move the servo because you've got a 55 or 65 gram servo sitting there on the back, and you got that long tail moment, which acts as a great big lever, yep. and that, there's an old rule, Archimedes said, you can, I can move the earth if you give me a lever long enough. Right. And that's what's going on here. So if we take that servo and move it to the equipment deck, and there is room on the equipment deck to do it, and convert this to a pull-pull setup, then you can get rid of some of the dead weight in the nose. So that just becomes a question of whether or not you want to do that type of work. And keep in mind, if you do that, you also need another set of control horns here on the back. You'll need to put one on each side. So just keep that in mind if you decide to go that route. In terms of the flight characteristics, Slicks are meant to tumble. You know, they're definitely tumbly planes. I didn't do much of that on this flight, of course, because it's a maiden, so I wanna do my inspection, make sure my weights that I added aren't falling out, and that my prop nut's tight, and all of that stuff that I go through after a maiden. So I will do an inspection, and we will fly it again. I don't know if there'll be any other footage, but we'll definitely fly it again before the day is over, for sure. Dave, what did you, what did you think? What, what comments do you have in terms of the weight management on this plane? I knew, I knew it was going to do it. It's obvious it's going to do it. The planes, all these planes are way overpowered. And yeah, the right way to do that is to try to use whatever weight you already have on the airplane and distribute it properly so you don't have to add any more. So whatever you have to do to do that, yeah, move the servo to the front. It's gorgeous, beautiful, flies beautiful, and it doesn't need any more power. And the flight time is going to be just fine. If you flew it nine minutes, we flew nine minutes, uh, on, on, you know, kind of moderate flight when you're doing 3D, not super high, uh, high 3D, energy, you know, yeah. no, you just, uh, what, like we fly, we're going to fly at seven and a half minutes, yeah. you know, without a problem. So beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. It worked. I think so yeah. too. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'll tell you guys from a visibility, I didn't comment enough during the flight, but the visibility on this color scheme is amazing. Really, really good. The white and that orange pop on the wingtip are just, they're, they're mind blowing when you're up in the air. I love it very helpful in terms of keeping your orientation straight while you're flying. All right, that wraps up my maiden flight of the Extreme Flight Slick. One thing I'll remind you guys, if you're interested in this setup, get over to Extreme Flight and buy them because we got the holidays coming. They've already shipped at least a couple of these out. I, I already know at least one other person that bought one and who knows how much longer they're gonna have stock. So, you know, eh, just, just be aware if you're interested in this kind of format, I wouldn't waste time. Don't let the grass grow under your feet. Well, Dave, thanks for filming. I appreciate you. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. All right, hasta la vista. You're welcome, man. Anytime. And get out there and fly something.